there was nothing unusual of the day. That evening was unusual. And I didn't hear from him on Friday, so Saturday, I think I tried calling him and his phone went to voicemail. Um, I was home. Uh, I was already a little nervous and anxious because I speak to Shaka every night. She came to my room, it was like 4.30 a.m. And I'm like, you need to sleep. My daughter called me, Shaka big sister, Nana. And he said, well, daddy, I'll call you this time. I understand that, but, you know, I used to not call you this time. But I'm calling you, this is uh, an emergency. February 26, 2021. The day that started to change my life. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy day, crazy day, crazy day. My older sister, myself, my younger sister, um, Nawa, and my other younger sister, um, Aisha. It was a ton of fun. Um, as I said, we are the first two in our family, the first two of six. You know, I'm the oldest girl, he's the eldest boy. And um, for a while, it was just us two. So it was us two and our parents. And of course, we were really young at the time, but we do have fond memories. Um, our parents are immigrants from the Ivory Coast. And um, my father, when he first immigrated to the United States, started off as a taxi driver. And sometimes he would take us along um, with him. Uh, you know, my mom would be in the, in the back seat with us too, and the passenger would actually ride up front. It was kind of funny, it seemed like a road trip or so. And, um, you know, there wasn't, like I wasn't somewhere where he wasn't and vice versa. We were always together. You know, we would read together. I would try to play video games with him and, you know, he'd be annoyed because it's like, oh, you're a girl, you don't know how to do this. But um, we were like two peas in a pod essentially. And as our other siblings came to be, then the, the, the tribe just grew. Yeah, growing up with us, the first four of us, that it was, it was dope, it was fun. We had a lot of fun back when, uh, Nickelodeon Guts was fire, or Legend of the Hidden Temple was, was dope. Um, we, was, we was always outside, always outside. We didn't even listen to nobody. <laughs> like, parents tell us, yo, don't go around the corner. We were like, nah, we going around the corner. Come back home, get our behinds book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And of course, there was a point in time where I wanted a younger brother. So I was the unofficial brother, and he just, everything guys did is what I had to do by default because he was taking me everywhere with him. So riding on the pegs on the back of the bike, that was me. Sha told me that. Wrestling moves, who was going to get tested on? Me. <laughs> um, when we used to play Power Rangers, uh, Thundercats, SWAT Cats, I was, a, I was a skinny SWAT. He was the thick SWAT. I can't remember his name. So the, our relationship was just straight up fun. Lots of fun. Parents was not really home because they had to work. So it was that and then raising ourselves and the little ones. <laughs> Shaka was a hot mess. <laughs> he gave my parents a lot of trouble, but Shaka was always very fun to be around. Uh, Shaka talked a lot in class, so the teachers always called about that. But Shaka has a, I don't know, some air. And everybody just like him. Anywhere Shaka go, he make friends. He either know people or like literally meets people and it's like he's known them forever. So that's what it's like growing up with Shaka. Like it's honestly never a dull moment. He just knows how to put other light into people. And I think that's important because in a world where it's very dark and it's a lot of turmoil, sometimes you don't really know who to even turn to because it's just so much negativity in this world. And I look to him and he's just always there. He's just always happy. He's always laughing. It kind of just, he gets you out of your personal anger or any type of mood that's like, oh, I don't feel it. And then he's just there just laughing like, why are you so upset? Like, why do you look like that? He'll just, he'll bring the laugh out of you. And I think that's his greatest strength, just taking the positivity out of you and really showing that. So I think that's really important. I think that's his biggest strength. He's always been there for me. You know, he's my best friend. Always doing a lot of, you know, stuff together and shit. So, you know, he's my, he's my homie, for sure. Love him to death, for sure. You know, in my parents' eyes, you know, he's always out doing stuff. So I couldn't really hang out with him all that much. But when we do get, um, come together, you know, we'd be having a blast, man. You know, have fun, go out to car races, you know, stuff, eat, you know, do a lot of fun stuff together. It's all, all my siblings, man, I equally love them. Sometimes they get on my nerves, but 
they 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 my people's forever, yo. And so much, so much things we did together, and so much adversity that we went through, and so much um, good things that we went through. And we we just did a lot. Like we all went through a lot. We did a lot, and no matter what, we always stick together, regardless of the fact. Like no matter what, I'm always there for them. As much as they get on my nerves, I'm always there for them. <laughs> you know. My father opened up a 99 cent store. That's when I could say that was my first time ever working a day in my life. So I probably was like 17, going on 18 or 18. And that's when I started working. Because my parents, my parents, both my parents, they always been into business of, of their own and not working for nobody. So um, my mom, my, I mean, not my mom, my father, he opened up a 99 cent store. I was working in a 99 cent store. And that was the first time I could say I had a job. <laughs> there was one night that uh, he forgot to lock up because so my father's the owner of the store. Me and Shah worked at the store. And it was like two other people who worked with us. It was a convenience store, 99 cent stuff, Todd, Bleach, things like that, nothing special. But um, he was cool with everybody in the neighborhood. And uh, everyone acted like they were cool with him. And you would think if the situation that I'm gonna break down now happened, that maybe somebody would be honest and tell him. So that night, uh, I think I left before him. Store closes about nine o'clock. Shah closed, he locked up. Oh, he thought he locked up, but he didn't. And he left, and guess what happens? They raided it, and I would say a good 50% of the store was gone. Next day when we come into work, that's when we seen he ain't locked the door, and it fell in the hands of, I don't want to say the wrong people, but it's the people you trust, right? Or people that uh, support the business, and you would think that the store is for everyone, not just us, it's for the community. But those are the people who decided to take advantage of that uh, kindness that Shaka has and they ransacked at least 50% of the store. And uh, recovering from that was, um, the financial part is not even the problem. It was just like, what do we do next? Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it was around the time the 99 cent store was closing. Um, he, needed, he needed some work and I, I believe I'd already gotten his uncle uh, some work doing some uh, spots here and there, doing security spots here and there. And um, Shad asked me in the, uh, about getting into that. Um, at the time, he had, yeah, Shad's a, I mean, for bouncing, you need to be a good size. Shad had a good size, so I, was, I hooked him up with a guy who uh, I knew had a couple of spots out there in Flushing. My main man, my man Jay. I knew him when I had the 99 cent store. So I used to always see him every now and again cop some stuff or whatever, we just chop it up mad cool. That's my dog right there, that's my dog. That's my dog right there. Like, I had to really think about that. That's really my dog right there. So, yeah, he's the one who introduced me to um, doing, becoming a bouncer. My very first bouncer gig. <laughs> I'm never gonna forget my very first bouncer gig. That was like, I wanted to fuck everybody up. <laughs> like, that was a mentality a lot of people started off with, and that's what I started off with. Like, nah, I'm, I'm here to regulate, put y'all niggas down, you know, fuck that. <laughs> But when I was working with the people I was working with at the time, um, they explained to me, like, nah, that's not what it's about. You got to be able to talk to people. You got to be smooth. You got to, because it's not always about fighting. Because if you fight, you're going to create a whole cycle for everybody else as well. You want to be able to, you know what I mean, calm a situation down and keep it smooth, you know, so that nobody could fight. So I just started learning that as I got older and, and more mature and then, um, working more, just gaining more experience. Then my nine to five, after my nine to five, go home, take my little nap before I, you know, go home, take a quick shower, take my little nap before I start the night gig. Um, well, I didn't feel anything about him doing security because he's done it for so long and I knew the dangers that come with the industry even after he bounces or even if he's going out and chilling, we usually tell each other, like, we're home, we're good, regardless, just because. That's just something we do. Um, and I didn't hear from him. I didn't hear from him Friday. I didn't hear from him Saturday. So I absolutely knew something was wrong because usually he gets up late after he bounces um, overnight. You know, usually he gets up, like, 4 p.m., 3 p.m. the next day. Then my 9 to 5, after my 9 to 5, go home, take my little nap before I, you know, go home, take a quick shower, take my little nap before I start the night gig. So I worked two parties. I was supposed to work two parties. I did the first party, and that was from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Even before that, my boy even called me 
you know, my boy called me, and I'm sitting there like, all right, he, he said that he got, he got some work for me for the night. Just come by, I'm doing a little party. I go in that party now. Only one guard was working. A lot of hood, a lot of hood niggas in there. Very hood. No issues with them. You know, nothing, no issue with them. You know, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. I didn't even know it was a stripper type of party. So it was a stripper party, you know. Whatever, it is what it is. <laughs> like I said, it was really hood. It was dark in there. Only one guard was working that night. Until I got there. I got there about like 1.30. So I go in there and I'm already like bad vibes from, from the gate. I'm not really feeling this, bro. Like this, this, this is not the type of party that's supposed to be up in here, bro. Like this, this is, it's mad dark in there. It's mad, like it's mad hood niggas in here. Like, I don't know. Then my boy who, who owns the spot, he had to bounce, so he bounced. So I'm like, cool, I got you. We're gonna pull this down. So he bounced. So I held the place down. I'm just chilling. And out of nowhere, um, I'm in the back. So the, it's, 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 um, what you call it? It's like a warehouse look, but fire. It's a beautiful place. Brick wall. Brick. It was one room, it was like a brick room. Like you go down the staircase, you walk in the door, you walk in the staircase. You, one room, one room to the right, that's where the brick was at. Other room to the left, that's the white, it's just straight white wall. Beautiful place. Nice, clean. So I'm in the brick room. I'm in the back cleaning up the bottles and stuff like that. Throwing away the bottles or whatever. Where the girls were getting dressed, they was getting dressed in the other room, which was the, the white room and stuff. But I was in the back cleaning up bottles, throwing the shits away, whatever. And there was an argument in the staircase. Argument was in the staircase. And dudes was just arguing. About what? Don't really know. Don't, it's none of my business, but I just dropped my bottles and then dropped what I was doing to go over there, to go assess the situation because I wanted to go mediate what they was arguing about so, they could be, so it could be peace. So I'll go over there to go mediate everything. And I came from where I was at to go to that room. So I'm running, made it right, got into the room. Like literally the fastest couple of seconds of, 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 of my life ever. You see the dude pull out, pull out the gun and just shooting the kid. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Yo, what's, yo, what's going on? Ran over there so I could go try to like, at least knock him down to something. You know what I mean? Like something, I tried. Cause I know I can't see somebody get hit and or somebody get hurt. Like I just, this is, that's just something I can't, I can't allow myself to see. So I guess, you know, my figure, my size, or from my voice, whatever it is, made him turn and hit me. I don't believe it was intentional. I don't believe it was intentional. But, I don't know if it was acting evil, but I believe it was, I, I personally don't believe it was intentional. I'm like, damn, so what my mom gonna say? What my pops gonna say? Fuck, shit. Shot, lay down on the floor. And all I heard was the, um, the shooter like, yo, like, not like, yo, like that, but like, I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. Man. Is that sorry to you? Because it, it, it wasn't intended for me. I know I heard that. 